Hey, how's everybody doing today? It's Elijah Muse back here with Gifted Hands School of Music. I want to welcome you all and here at Gifted Hands we are dedicated to learning the language of music and loving every single step of the process. So today I'm going to be breaking down an Eddie Brown chord movement. If you don't know who Eddie Brown is, please type him in on Google, on YouTube. He's an amazing gospel musician, uh, very famous in the gospel world, in the gospel realm. Uh, played with many, many big artists on recordings um, and in live concerts, tours, all of that stuff. So today I'm gonna be breaking down one of the chord movements that he uses. It can be used really as an intro to any gospel song um, as long as it fits. So check it out, let's get started. All right, so let's jump right into it, y'all. So we have this Eddie Brown chord movement, and this, like I said before, can be played as an intro to many songs. Um, in the original video that Eddie Brown plays this in, he plays it as an intro to his eyes on the sparrow. Um, so if a song starts on the one, the one chord, you can use this as an intro leading you all the way into the one. Okay, so let me play it for you. So it can be that, or you can do. Right, Amazing Grace, you can do that. Um, so there's many different songs that you can use this as an intro for, but essentially that is the movement right there, okay? So I'm just gonna show you how to play it. So we're in the key of A flat with this movement. Um, and here's our scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. So A flat is our scale, is our key that we're in. And so, this progression, essentially what it's doing is, I'm hitting the three chord, which is a C, and A flat, the three is C, right? But instead of usually a, a three is minor, we're playing the three as a half diminished, or a C minor seven flat five. So we have that, C minor seven flat five, our three chord to our six chord, which is a type of uh, F7. So we have a six chord and it's dominant. It's a F7 chord. And even though he's doing movements on it, I'm just telling you the chords that all of these movements are built around because we can simplify these concepts to make them much easier to understand, okay? So we have the three to the six, to the two. The two is dominant as well. B flat, B flat seven, to the five. And then we have this movement, four, D flat, four, three, which is uh, C, C minor. Four to the three, to the two, to the five. Oh, but the five is dom or sus, and then it resolves to dominant, okay? So once again, chord progression is three, six, two, five, four, three, two, five. And then into your whatever song you wanna play it over. All right, so that's it. So now let me show you specifically what he's doing. Now that we have the general chords and we know the, what the bass hand's doing, we can play the chords and then figure out the nuances that he's using in this, okay? So, first chord. First chord, like I said, is a C minor seven flat five. This is essentially what he's playing, but he plays a melody line leading into the C minor seven flat five or the C half diminished chord. So what we have is, we're walking it up from the C, right? And then you hit the C in your bass. And then we're gonna arpeggiate this C minor seven flat five. So that's the first thing. 
So that is all a C half diminished chord is just being broken up and arpeggiated. And then the next chord, the F7. So in my left hand, I'm playing a basic F7 chord, the one, the three, and the flat seven in my left hand. And then my right hand does this. And that is just moving. That's like me moving down an F altered scale to like hit color tones. So this is the first one. And these are just movements of minor and major thirds. He's alternating, so. We have a minor third in our right hand, minor third, major third, and uh, major third. And like I said, all this does is gives you plenty of color tones. So right here I have a sharp nine, then I have a flat nine, then I have a sharp five, then I have a flat five or a sharp 11. So that's what he's doing. And then... And then the next chord is gonna be over, or the next movement is over the B7. And we land on this, which is, I like to kinda, of, it feels like a sus almost. It's not sus all the way, but the sharp 11 right here, or the flat five, makes it feel suspended. So we have this, B flat and A flat in my left hand. My right hand's playing E, A flat, and C. And then that resolves to the B flat seven, to just a basic B flat seven chord. So my left hand just does, and then you add the D in, the major third. And then my right hand is right there, okay? And then the next movement is the E flat seven sus. And what he does is he he just hits the one in the left hand and the five in the right hand and then resolves the inner voicings. So this is E flat sus and then it resolves to E dominant. So one more time. Okay. And then you have this moment which is just A flat, G, F, G, A flat. So after we play that little melody line, we play these chords, which is the four chord, a D flat major seven. And I like to beef it up a little bit. Roll from my E flat to the F. I put that slur in there. All right, give it a little bit more flavor. And then we have an A flat major, add the two over C. Okay, so this is four, one over three, two, five. And then we have, I'm playing this for the five, which is an E flat nine sus. The same chord we played earlier in the progression. Put that E flat over the top, okay? And that's the whole chord progression. So let me play it all the way through for you one more time, very slowly. Okay, and like I said, that's an intro that you can play in Eddie Brown chord movement, taken directly from Eddie Brown, that you can play as an intro to any gospel song that starts on the one chord. Uh, so what I would do as well, and what I'm practicing myself, is I would take this movement and try to play it in another key. So this key, like I said, it's, um, we're doing three, six, two, five, four, three, two, five, Right, that's the movement. So what I would do is try to take it and play it in every other key as well. Like that's something that I've been doing recently in my playing and it's done wonders 
um, taking one chord progression or one song and applying it to every single key. So that way you get all of these chord progressions, you get all of the chord voicings in every single key. So say you're, you want to use this progression for a song that's being sung at your church, um, but you don't know how to play it in that key. You should have practiced it, right? So that's why now I practice these movements, songs in every single key so that I'm always prepared. It's better to be over-prepared than to be under-prepared, all right? So definitely take this, move it to other keys, um, put your own twists, your own flips on it. And as always, if you enjoy this video and you want more exclusive content, more in-depth lessons, uh, maybe a live video call with me. I offer all of these services along with learning materials and resources such as MIDI files, chord charts, and other resources as well on my membership site, the Gifted Hands Academy. I will put the link in the description. Um, you are more than free to go join it. It's a monthly membership. And like I said, I release exclusive weekly lessons, um, much longer lessons, much more in depth than what I do here on YouTube. And then we also have a community where all of my members can come and talk to me, ask me questions. We do monthly live calls where, the, where um, I sit down and talk with them about specific topics that you may be struggling with. So if you're interested in this, please go join my membership site. Um, and support what I have going on here as I support you. That would be great. Um, but until next time, I hope you all have an amazing day. Stay blessed, stay practicing, stay growing, and I will see you all next time.